infinitely small. So I was, oh my God, this is actually telling us everything we need to know about the structure of reality, the structure, the physics of creation. And that's according to my theory. I was mind blown. But then I, on top of it, they made it so nice that you could actually overlay the, the, the 14 octahedron cavities that are generated by the 64 tetrahedron grid, right on top of it, and you get a very nice match. So, you know, and then since then, it's been going berserk. There's been 64 tetrahedron crop circles occurring. Look at the precision. Again, right beside an ancient site. Stone site with an enormous stone that was placed on top of another. And sure enough, when you overlay the 64 tetrahedron grid, you get a perfect match. This is not trivial. Okay. Uh, when you continue to explore the crop circles, this one is really interesting. It was, it was thought to be, by one of the famous psychic, the most important crop circle ever to occur. And because it's really simple, everybody went, huh? There's other crop circle much more interesting. But in fact, if you look carefully, that crop circle is a 2D representation of a 3D vector equilibrium. And in this crop circle, it gives you singularity in the middle, and it tells you that each tetrahedron generates the sphere, the radiative side of the equation. But then, if you take that sphere around each tetrahedron and you add the other ones of the other tetrahedrons, you get this symbol, the seed of life, known as the seed of life or popularized as the seed of life. That is a symbol that is found in many, many ancient civilization walls as well. And then they give you a crop circle to tell you you've decoded it right. And they insist. <laughs> Here is your intersecting spheres. Note torque, rotation. Do you realize that current Einstein field equation does not accommodate for torque. What they did is that they eliminated torque by attaching the observer to the rotating object. So that they wouldn't have to deal with correlous effect and torque. Well, if you do that, there's a good chance you're going to end up with 98% the mass of the universe missing, <laughs> which is exactly what occurs in current cosmology. But instead of revising their approach to energy and torque and so on, they invented a new kind of matter. They call it dark matter. And they just plugged it in to the equation to make it work. <laughs> Some kind of dark matter that doesn't radiate, that nobody can detect. It's convenient. <laughs> Your equations are missing 98% of, of the mass out there. And instead of revising your equations, you just plug in some 
dark matter, this is not what I think of good physics. But if you look at galaxies and so on, imagine all the torque you would need to orbit a galaxy, billions of stars. You're talking about a lot of energy. So they give us a little bit of an idea about the rotation here and the coreless effect. But as well, you know, in case we were confused, they made sure we realized that it's all in a fractal structure. You see, it's all there. It's just amazing. <coughs> Okay, this is a part of the presentation. Are you guys all doing okay? Um, I'm just going to finish this section, and then we'll go... How are we doing? 12.30. Um, actually, if you guys want to take a little break and uh, go to the washroom and all this, we'll do 10 minutes, or actually, let's do 5 minutes. Be back here at... Um, 12.35, okay, and uh, we'll reconvene and we'll do another section and then do lunch. This next section is really exciting, it's a lot of fun. Okay, have a good break. Thank you. Well, we're going to go a little longer and do this section, and this section is quite amazing. And you might not get right away the relationship to this research, but you will get it in this afternoon session. So we were talking about crop circles. And, uh, you know, all these, you know, esoteric crop circles that are occurring and if you don't have a base in what we've discussed earlier, it doesn't necessarily make sense. It's like, oh wow, you know, a bunch of really cool geometries in the field, you see? But with what we have come to in our conclusion, with what the logic we've been following since this morning, then all of a sudden these crop circles have a whole new meaning. They are talking about something very, very important very fundamental to reality and you know you you imagine imagine that you were an advanced species that had the capacity to travel across the universe and you showed up on this planet you know you found this planet and uh, you know, you're basically like uh, studying the planet a little bit before you land, you know. And, uh, you know, you kind of tap into the radio waves and the TV. Uh, and, you know, you look at the TV and you watch a football game with, you know, all these people bumping into each other, running after this piece of skin. And... You know, all the rest of people, thousands of people getting drunk, eating uh, hot dogs, you know, and doing the wave, you might find that when you turn around and you say, okay, who's volunteering to go on the surface, uh, you'd have a hard time finding volunteers. You know, you might find, and I don't have anything against football, but you know, with all the people shooting at each other, um, you'd probably say, well, uh, you know, it's not a good idea to land on this planet right away. We've got to wait till these people have a little bit more understanding of the way the, function, the universe functions and how it uh, works together and how the universe actually uh, works in collaboration with all points not in destructive in, uh, uh, with all points. And so, you know, there's lots to be said about that. The concept that the universe always goes towards further disorder 
is violated by simple observation. The laws of entropy are violated by simple observation. And I'm going to... I'm going to go through that a little bit more this afternoon, so remind me, but, uh, you know, we don't have time to go through that right now. But basically, there's evidence, including your own existence, if you take your DNA and you put it end to end, well, you'll find, first of all, that in one cell, there is six feet of DNA. This is from the Genome Project. And if you took the six feet of DNA that's in one cell and then put all the other six feet of all the other cells in your, in your human body right now, you could wrap your DNA 